We continue with part three of First Aid Embryology, brought to you by Falcon. If further information is required, please refer to Falcon online. Our discussion now brings us to brachial apparatus, also called the pharyngeal apparatus, composed of brachial le clefts, arches, and pouches. Brachial clefts, derived from ectoderm, also called brachial grooves. Brachial arches, derived from mesoderm, muscle arteries, and neural crests, bones, cartilage. Brachial pouches, derivative from endoderm. The mnemonic, cap, covers outside from inside. Clefts, ectoderm, arches, mesoderm, pouches, endoderm, all part of the brachial apparatus. Brachial cleft derivatives. First cleft develops into external auditory meatus. Second through fourth clefts form temporary cervical sinuses, which are obliterated by proliferation of second arch mesenchyme. Persistent cervical sinus leads to brachial cleft cyst within lateral neck. Brachial arch derivatives. Derivative 1. Cartilage. You will notice quite a number of M's here. Meckel's cartilage. Leads to formation of mandible malus incus sphenomandibular ligament. In terms of muscles, muscles of mastication, these include temporalis, masseter, lateral and medial pterygoids, Malohyoid, anterior belly of digastric, tensor tympani, tensor villi palatini, anterior two thirds of the tongue. Nerves, fifth cranial nerve, branches two and three, which include mandibular, maxillary, respectively. Abnormalities, comments, Treasure Collins syndrome. First arch neural crest fails to migrate, leading to mandibular hypoplasia, facial abnormalities. Let's go on to arch 2. Records cartilage. Second, S. Stapes, styloid process. Lesser horn of hyoid, stylohyoid ligament. Muscles include muscles of facial expression, stapedius, stylohyoid. Posterior belly of digastric. Nerves. Facial nerve. Seventh cranial nerve. Third arch. Cartilage. Greater horn of hyoid. Muscles include stylopharyngeus. Think of stylopharyngeus innervated by glossopharyngeal nerve. Therefore, cranial nerve 9. Stylopharyngeus. Abnormalities. Comments include. Congenital pharyngocutaneous fistula, persistence of cleft and pouch, resulting in fistula between tonsillar area, cleft and lateral neck. Fourth through sixth arches, cartilage, thyroid, cricoid, arytenoids, corniculate, cuneiform. Muscles include fourth arch, would be most pharyngeal constrictors, cricothyroid, Levator villi palatinine. The sixth arch muscle derivatives include all intrinsic muscles of larynx except the crocothyroid, which was derived from the fourth arch. Fourth arch nerves include vagus, superior laryngeal branch, responsible for swallowing. Sixth arch. Also, vagus, however, recurrent laryngeal branch for speaking. Arches 3 and 4 form posterior one-third of tongue. Arch 5 makes no major developmental contributions. We continue our discussion with brachial apparatus with brachial pouch derivatives. The first pouch develops into the middle ear cavity, eustachian tube, mastoid air cells. The second pouch develops into epithelial lining of 
palatine tonsil. Third pouch, the dorsal wings develop into inferior parathyroids. Dorsal wings develop into inferior parathyroids. Third pouch, the ventral wings develops into the thymus. Fourth pouch, the dorsal wings develops into superior parathyroids. So the entire development of the parathyroids requires both the third and fourth pouch, but it's inferior, superior, respectively. In the margin, first pouch contributes to endoderm lined structures of ear. Middle ear cavity, eustachian tube, mastoid air cells. Third pouch contributes to three structures. Those, in, those include the thymus, left and right inferior parathyroids. Third pouch structures end up below the fourth pouch structure. Aberrant development of third and fourth pouches, resulting in DeGeorge syndrome. Leads to T-cell deficiency. Why? Because there is thymic aplasia, responsible for T-cell maturation, and also hypocalcium because the parathyroids are not there to release parathyroid hormone. MEN2A, multiple endocrine neoplasia. Mutation of germline, RET. Neural crest cells. Adrenal medulla, pheochromocytoma. Parathyroid, tumor, third and fourth pharyngeal pouch. Parafollicular cells, medullary thyroid cancer, derived from neural crest cells, associated with fourth, fifth pharyngeal pouches. Let's discuss tongue development. First, brachial arch forms anterior two-thirds, thus sensation via cranial nerve 5, branch 3, which is your maxillary branch of the fifth cranial nerve, trigeminal, taste via facial nerve, seventh cranial nerve. Third and fourth arches form posterior one-third, thus sensation and taste mainly via glossopharyngeal, Extreme posterior would be the vagus. Motor innervation is via completely hypoglossal. Twelfth, muscles of the tongue are derived from occipital myotomes. Please refer to the illustration down below. In the margin, taste, cranial nerve 7, 9, and 10, solitary nucleus. Pain is via trigeminal branch 3, 9, and 10. Motor is completely hypoglossal, cranial nerve 12. Thyroid development. Thyroid diverticulum arises from floor primitive pharynx, descends into neck, connected to tongue by thyroglossal duct, which normally disappears but may persist as primitive lobe of thyroid. Foramen cecum is normal remnant of thyroglossal duct. Most common ectopic thyroid tissue site is the tongue. Thyroglossal duct cyst in midline neck and will move with swallowing versus persistent cervical sinus leading to brachial cleft cyst in lateral neck. Please be able to differentiate between the two. The illustration on the right is showing you foramen cecum. There is the persistent thyroglossal duct which will move upon swallowing tracheanthymus. Cleft lip and cleft palate. Cleft lip is failure of fusion of the maxillary and medial nasal process. Please refer to the illustration on the right. Failure of fusion of the maxillary and medial nasal processes. Formation of the primary palate. Cleft palate is failure of fusion of the lateral palatine process, the nasal septum, and or the median palatine process. Formation of the secondary palate. Cleft lip and cleft palate have two distinct etiologies but often occur together. This now concludes part three of first aid embryology. If you feel as though more information is required, please refer to Falcon Home 1. Thank you.